Today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to mount the two systems to the car, and we're gonna compare the systems on cost, ease of use, and functionality. Now, as you can see, we've got two go-karts here. This older version has the Easy Tune system, and then over here, we've got a brand new go-kart, and it's got a Micron LCU1 kit fitted to it. It's a brand new system as well. So now we're just gonna run through some of the benefits of the two systems. Hey guys, today's video, we're going to be stepping you through the differences between the EasyTune Lambda kit versus the Micron LCU1 tuning kit. Now, as you can see, we've got two go-karts here. This older version has the EasyTune system already set up on it, so we can show you how to mount that system on this car. And then over here, we've got a brand new go-kart, and it's got an Micron LCU1 kit fitted to it. It's a brand new system as well. So this one, like I said, has an LCU1 fitted, we have covered that exact process in another video, so that link's gonna be in the description below, so you can check that video out too. Today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to mount the two systems to the car, and we're gonna compare the systems on cost, ease of use, and functionality. So let's get into the video. Okay, so you can see here the Easy Tune is mounted above the Micron. The reason for that is I've got it upside down, is that these lights are gonna operate, and I'm gonna be able to see those in my peripheral vision while I'm driving and I don't need to look down on the steering wheel or anywhere else away from the track while I'm trying to see what the engine's doing while I'm driving. I wanna know what the engine's doing while I'm driving and then I can think about what adjustments I need to make and that's the beauty of the Easy Tune system. I like to run the harness all the way down with the original harness if there is one or this side of the fuel tank and then we run the cables across the bottom of the seat with a couple of little zip ties here just to keep it neat and run that in over to the header pipe and then when we're over on the header pipe, you're gonna put the sensor in here. We get, this is like a little weld on socket and you weld that to the pipe about 135 to 115 millimeters from this end, the engine end. So just come back about 115 to 135 millimeters and weld this guy in there. Then you can just bolt in the um, sensor and you're good to go. Now you can see this is the Micron LCU1 Lambda sensor and we've got it welded here in the body of the pipe which is perfectly acceptable because this one is a heated element, but you can actually mount them over here too. Same thing, measured down from the end of the pipe about 130 millimeters, and you can drill a hole here and weld on the exhaust socket for the sensor to go into. Either is fine. Once you've got this bad boy all mounted up, you're gonna drill a couple of little holes, run the cables all nice and neat. This is the clip, nothing fancy there, and a good spot to put the LCU one, sort of the brains of the operation, is down here on, in between the fuel tank or on the fuel tank support. And then you can run your cabling up this side of the fuel tank like you would for your normal data logger system. So now I'm just gonna run through some of the benefits of the two systems. On the Easy Tune, it's super simple to use. It's almost too easy. The lights, they just flash as you're driving around and you can tune on the fly, meaning if you've got a problem, you can apply a solution, meaning you can change those jets as you're driving and almost measure the outcomes perfectly as you're driving around the track. And each lap you just get better and better because you can feel the engine performance change as you move the needles on a carburetor like the Tillotson, like on these uh, KA100s or on the X30s. And it makes tuning these engines and learning how to tune them really easy because you're getting a visual representation of what the engine's doing i.e. the lights are changing colour depending on whether you've got the mixtures too lean or too rich or they flash green when they're just perfect. So some of the benefits of the Micron system is that it's super high tech, okay, we've got a data logger system, it's making recall, it's super easy when you get back to the pits. Now you can get a visual representation of what's going on with the engine, similar to this system, but it's a decimal system, okay, it's not a lights, it's just some numbers on the screen, now I'm gonna show you that later on. Now, once you get familiar with those uh, numbers, it's quite easy to tune the engine on the fly as well, and that really teaches you in real time what the engine's doing. So if you make the engine way too rich and the, the performance sucks because everyone's driving away from you, you're gonna know why, because the numbers are gonna read really low, uh, you've reached it up yourself, and then your performance sucks so straight away, you go, oh wow, geez, I don't wanna do that no more, Des. And same thing, if you lean it out too much, the numbers go really, really high. Same thing, like the guys are driving away from you off the corners and you're like, oh man, what the heck? You know, you're jumping up and down in the seat, but the engine's just too lean. Well, hey, it's a great indicator. So these systems 
really teach the drivers because they get the visual representation of what's going on with the engine when they're changing the mixtures. Now, if you are running a Rotax style product with a slide carburetor that you can't adjust once you're out on the track, the LCU1 kit is excellent because it's gonna log your data and then when you get back to the pits, you can download that to the computer, run through what the engine was doing and then make some changes for the next session. So some main differences between the two systems is this one is primarily used with lights for tuning. This one is done with numbers. This system here has a narrow band sensor. This one has a wide band sensor. This one isn't a heated sensor. That's why we have to have it so close to the exhaust port. This one is a heated sensor. So you can actually put it in the belly of the pipe or closer to the engine. Now there is some price variations between the two. The, uh, the Easy Tune system can be purchased here in Australia for about 365 bucks, and it's a standalone system, meaning it's got its own battery and it runs all by itself. So you can buy that system and just go to the track and start tuning your engine. The LCU1 kit obviously is from Micron. It's exceptional, but you're gonna pay for it. It's 660 bucks here in Australia. And obviously too, you're gonna have to buy yourself a Micron 5 and they are currently around $850. So all up, you're up for about $1,500 over here as opposed to about $400 over here. I get asked quite often, what system is the best from new guys and from more advanced drivers? So if you're brand new to karting, I guess, uh, or maybe some of the younger drivers too that are uh, really focused on driving and not so much what's happening on around them, uh, the Micron system is probably gonna be the one for you because it's gonna log all the data and you can download it back in the pits. As opposed to the EasyTune, which is a bunch of lights, they're flashing while you're driving and if you're not paying attention to those, it's really hard to relay that information back to your mechanic or your team. Other than that, you could probably film it with a GoPro so that you could look at that video data when you get back to the pits and see what the engine was doing. Then you can make some changes for the next session. Now tuning an engine and analyzing the data is a pretty substantial topic. So we're gonna be covering that one next week. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for tuning in. Subscribe if you haven't already. We're trying to hit 20K before Christmas and also too on TikTok. Shout out to everyone that smashed that like button over there. We hit 2 million views, blowing up. So go and check out Power Public on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, we're all over it. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.